Hi, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Director Theo Anthony here with us. Here's his film, Subject to Review, ESPN Films, 30 for 30. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. This was like the ultimate deep dive on instant <laughs> replay in tennis. So I guess the first question is like, what piqued your interest with all this initially? Yeah. Um, so I'm not a tennis fan. Mm -hmm. um, I love tennis. I respect it, but I just don't really follow it. Um, so I was just really coming from uh, a place of interest in, in the technology. I think uh, originally I was thinking this is a, is a larger film about um, the history of instant replay and mm -hmm. just how that's changed our um, spectatorship over, over time uh, and how we've had to really learn to see in a different way as these technologies have, have come along. Um, and as we got deeper into the project, it kind of became apparent that it would be more effective to really zero in and, and zero in and like hone in on um, just this one technology in tennis and um, I think tennis is a really great example of that because you have this very seemingly simple decision of in or out mm -hmm. that actually has all these very complex forces beneath the surface so yeah, yeah it's certainly a lot more complex so when did you realize that it's not just about being in and out like even the technology is not perfect like it could be a few inches out here a few inches in there like what was it like unpacking all that technologically? Yeah, I think, I mean, to be fair to Hawkeye, the, the, it's, it's uh, millimeters, not mm -hmm. inches. So, like, they're, they are very, very accurate. But, you know, um, and the film goes into this a lot about, like, the nature of measurement. That, you know, we're, there is no objective, true measurement in the world. We're always using human instruments that have some margin of error. And these instruments are always relative to other instruments that have to be calibrated by other instruments. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, when you, so when you're starting to talk about accuracy, you really have to start talking about um, these larger systems that these instruments exist in. So, um, so yeah, so with tennis, uh, with, with, with tennis, it's, it's, again, just this thing that seems really simple on the surface, but has all these other things going on beneath it. Yeah, totally. It's funny to think about tennis before all this was happening with Hawkeye, because you have this Serena Williams clip in there with Jennifer Capriati, and that ball is clearly in. It's mm -hmm. ruled out. There's no instant replay system, and we roll on. So what was it like going back to 2004, seeing that moment, especially like with Serena Williams at the U.S. Open, like there's always something going on. So why did you guys include that in there? Yeah, so the Serena clip is like really important. I mean, for a lot of reasons. One, you just kind of see how much she's been up against for mm -hmm. so long, and too. She's got this like incredible like mini denim skirt on. That's, yeah, like, just, like, <laughs> she's, she's just like been, perfectly 2004. She, I mean, but like she's just been doing, you know, her thing for so long, and she's such a an icon. And um, but also just I think it shows the real need for these types of technologies, mm -hmm. and that you know no one wants you know to see um, injustice in the world. No one wants to see unfair calls. No one wants to see anyone get screwed over like that. So there is this very very real need for you know some sort of. Um, you know, accuracy or measurement system. Um, and I think what the film really tries to get into is, well, like, if we start at that point and, and recognize the need, well, what happens next? And I think you can look at a lot of instances in history, not just with tennis, where you have something, you know, this v really big perceived injustice, an event, you know, and, and, uh, um, you know, an event in, where, where people are very soft and have mm -hmm. a very emotional reaction. And in response to that, a lot happens that we don't really parse out the details and we kind of end up in this place that we don't really know how we got there and um, the film kind of goes in that direction and sees what uh, what these what these instruments where, where, how they've led us to where we are now so. yeah there was a lot more emotion in there with the whole justice and justice thing than I was anticipating so why was that important for you to hit on because you go all the way back to the 1800s and we're talking about looking at horses and whether all four of their little feet are on the ground there. So yeah. what was it like kind of going through this whole history and also like an emotional part of it too? Yeah, I, I find a lot of like inspiration going back um, to the very early days of, of photography and even before, before that, just because you really see people who are reckoning with this entirely new way of processing the world. And you find that a lot of the issues that they're facing and a lot of the questions that they bump up against, we're still bumping up against 150 years mm -hmm. later. And you know, we kind of like to enshrine it in the past and present it you know, as, this, as this thing that we've grown from in this really kind of like condescending way to the people who have come before us. And um, I really like to talk about the present through talking about the past. And um, specifically with Edward Moybridge, who, um, I is one of the historical figures that I go into in the film who created one of the first, uh, you know, what could be recognized as uh, moving images. You know, he created this um, setup where you had 
24 cameras along a racetrack that took photos of a horse as it galloped across. And there are these very famous hist like images in history. And um, yeah, what he was up against of like, well, what, what am I seeing? What does this mean? Like, what, what does it mean you know, to, to, to see the human body in this way are, are still things that we're up against you know, mm -hmm. when we're looking at like thinner and thinner slices of reality with higher resolution, higher frame rates, and still like the same questions. We kind of are bumping up against really like the limits of, of what it means <laughs> to be human in a way. So, yeah. And even yeah. with the technology, we can still have those questions. Like you have the Federer Nadal clip in there, and that Nadal shot is Justin, mm -hmm. and the Hawkeye is new at that point. And Federer is asking Carlos Ramos, like, you saw it, like it was out, and it was yeah. just in. So it's like even when the technology is there, like at that point, people still weren't comfortable with it. So you mentioned going into the past, like that moment specifically. Why was that one an important one to check out? Yes, yeah, so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of moments I could have gone into that, like where it's just a super close call. I think it's important for uh, a number of reasons. One, and I think that maybe is most accessible without actually having, having seen the whole film, is that you have something where your human eyes are saying, this ball looked out. Mm -hmm. But the, the digital eyes or these, these, these computer eyes are saying, the ball's in. And what happens when you have a direct contradiction between like a human, physical, lived experience and just some data on a screen that's saying, no, 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 that, that experience is wrong. Like, what is in check? And the way that Hawkeye is set up right now in, in tennis and in sports is that it overrules, you know, human decision making. There's, right. no, there's no checks and balances. So um, no matter what you see, so long as Hawkeye, you know, whatever Hawkeye says, that goes. Um, it's not like that, you know, in all sports, which I think is another thing to talk about, but... Um, but yeah, so I think that that's really important. Also, the Nadal clip is is very interesting because it's um, the data later revealed that the that the ball was called in by a margin of one millimeter, mm -hmm. um, which is within the statistical average deviation right. uh, of the Hawkeye system of three point six millimeters, and that's a lot of numbers, a lot of like <laughs> statistics stuff. But basically, what it what it means is you have this really interesting situation where from a mathematical statistical perspective the ball was both in and out at the same time according to Hawkeye's system so you have this thing where you have these systems that um, you know alleged to make the world clear and to um, tell us more about the world and what often happens is that the closer and closer we look we just have more and more questions so that's really the importance of of that clip to me so with that being said, would you say that Hawkeye has had a mostly positive impact on tennis or because of the fact that there can be some nuance with it that it's a little bit grayer in the sport? Yeah, I think, um, I think everything, I think it's all gray, you know? You're that guy, yeah. And I think, and I think uh, I'll say, you know, to the Hawkeye people watching is that I, I think that they have an incredible technology mm -hmm. and I think that they have had a really positive impact on the game. I think that they've allowed um, spectators to have a new way to analyze the sport and to enjoy the sport. Um, and I'm totally on board with that. And I really like, I mean, even as a non-tennis mm -hmm. fan, just someone who really loves images and thinking about images, I love um, what Hawkeye means um, to the sport and just to that viewing experience. But yeah, I just in, in terms of um, like, I just, I'm just curious, like, how does this work and what mm -hmm. does it mean? And those are the questions that I like to ask. And I think that we can ask those questions and be critical of these systems sure. without saying, oh, this is a bad thing for the sport. And so I think um, it's like literacy, you know, you visual literacy is, is, a, is a really important thing and teaching people, um, you know, to understand what they're seeing is, is, is really important um, to me. What was the most fascinating thing you learned about the technology? Um, oh man, there's so much. Uh, I have to think about this. I think finding out the way that they, I love seeing them calibrate it. Mm -hmm. Like they just, you know, it's, it's not all automatic, you know, they don't no. just, it's just a plug and play thing. And, and that's another thing is that, you know, all of these kind of veneers of automation and technology always kind of like there's always humans behind them for now mm -hmm. you know there's always some kind of wizard behind the curtain and um, that was the most fascinating thing for me is to sort of see them really tune this this instrument in and um, yeah just just learning more and more about how they even like they're the subtle um, 
the subtle changes in height on yeah. the court. Like that changes over the like at the U.S. Open. Like if you're in the morning, the court is like cooler, and so but over the course of the day, it gets hotter and hotter. And so they actually have to calibrate again in the middle of the day to you know to account for those things. And uh, just learning about that was, I think, the most interesting for me. So. Definitely. And then how wild is it that like they know right away what yeah. the call is, but there's this whole buildup to it. Like everybody's watching, waiting for yeah. it to happen. Like. How weird is that that we've gone from not having it at all to like really like this spectator sport, sport sort of moment in the sport? Yeah, exactly. I think that that is um, that's really one of the my like the that's one of the, the core tenets of the film is um, you know this 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 system was brought in to make the viewing experience more exciting, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, it was brought in to so when there's a missed call or something like that, you the viewer at home feel like you can know more and that's you know brings more enjoyment to to watching the sport and then over time it gets kind of really folded into the game as as a way like of providing justice in a way of like making calls on the field but it still has its like you know its de core dna of entertainment value and so you know there that kind of interplay of, of justice and entertainment is super interesting like yeah it is making calls on the field but you have to do it in an entertaining way. Mm -hmm. And also, like, you know, they're presenting, it's in Hawkeye's interest to present themselves, pre to present it in an interesting way. Because if you just say whether a ball was in or out, you know, you as a viewer, you're saying, like, really? Like, you're like, all right, cool, but sure? we can, we can cool. do a little like, more to this. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really like a, it's like a court case, you mm -hmm. know? Like, when you go in and you see, like, a, a really flashy prosecutor who's, like, trying to, like, you know, stare the jury down and like do all these like theatrics like that's part of the show like there's there's a real show to you know the court of law and i think it's the same thing with hawkeye where like they got to put on a like a cool show for yeah, you as well like <laughs> yeah you know we have to do have these like really beautiful 3d renders right. we have to show we have to people are know, clapping exactly yeah. and so that to me is super interesting that like in order to be convinced of truth there has to be a sufficient like entertainment value to the truth mm -hmm. that we accept like we right. have to be entertained by it you know yeah. so and that's interesting and also problematic but yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think that, that also can be applied to the clay because the clay we're just going off the ball bouncing off the clay and yeah. like while we think that's true our naked eye could tell us something different compared to the technology so do you think technology will ever be put in clay yeah, well that's, I mean, that's like a, that's a cultural thing almost. Like the French, like mm -hmm. are very conservative. Very particular. Yeah, yeah. and, and I kind of respect that. Like, mm. I, I'm like, uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, I, I respect that. Um, and uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be used, but I think there is something to being said. Like, look, we could, you know, get more and more accurate, but like, that's not the game we play. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, we've agreed on this thing and, you know, these are the rules of the game. And, you know, rules after all are, are pretty arbitrary. Mm -hmm. And I think um, just as, yeah, rules are arbitrary. And I think with the, uh, with the clay court, um, there is a real opportunity, but I think the clay court does function as it sort of shows in the film, like those clay particles do act as a recording surface. Mm -hmm. And just in the same way that, cameras you know record the image a clay court every time you step on the court has a has a record of your footprint every time a ball bounces you know it's showing where the ball bounced and um, just because that's the authoritative record over Hawkeye you know we're still relying on on some material record and mm -hmm. um, yeah I don't know I hope I hope that clay doesn't change because mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a cool quirk of the sport well it's like Wimbledon where you have to wear white like there's some very particular rules of tennis and that's yeah. just kind of the way they roll oh man I mean, we don't get me like the Wimbledon <laughs> grass thing is so wild it's yeah. like this blade of grass is in and this blade of grass is not like it's just it's, it's insane yeah, when you yeah, think yeah. about it from that perspective yeah. and they're just like we've been doing it this way forever that's the yeah. way it's going to be and so you're like, yeah. okay, I guess we have to keep going. Yeah, with this. and I'm not like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be like that guy with being like, well, was it actually in or out? Like, I just think <laughs> no, that we should you know, question these things. I, I think, think we should natural. question these things, yeah. and um, I think it it makes it more interesting, especially like, um, you know, we're watching this for the for the drama, mm -hmm. and the the ambiguity is the drama. Yeah. And if we, you know, if, if we take away that, you know, ambiguity, I think we like, you know, we lose out on some of the drama, and. Um, and yeah, you know, I think I think these things are, I think, you know, really picking apart these technologies and showing that there's way more gray area than than like we thought isn't like taking down the sport or taking down Hawkeye. It's like no, there's actually a lot more drama happening all the time than you know we ever really thought. So, yeah.
Yeah, no doubt about it. Theo, thanks hey, a lot, man. Thanks a lot. December 22nd? December 22nd, All right, yeah. check it out. Subject to review for Theo. I'm DJ. See you next time. You're on the sit-down.